how you doing YouTube? This is Chris Mizar here with a review about AMD's monster of a CPU. Now, is it as great as everybody says it is? Stay tuned and find out. If you're not familiar with AMD's Threadripper series, this processor lineup is for workstation PCs. Compared to Xeon, where it would cost you an arm and a leg to own one, a Threadripper is at a very, very affordable price for what it is. AMD's 3970X 32 core processor, which is 64 threads unlocked, is a dream. It's only a, what a workstation could really dream of. It's crazy to think that a 3970X could run Windows 98 on its own. That little core processor can do that. One of the most amazing things that AMD's Threadripper series can do is that all the cores inside that processor could run all in sync with each other. So they split the load equally compared to having one core working harder than the other. So when you're running a single core task project that it has that power to run single core without disabling any of the cores of your AMD processor or of that AMD processor. And the wonderful thing about that is like if you like to occasionally game on your PC, that's a great feature for it. And again, this is not a gaming processor. This is a processor for workstation use. Back with prior thread rippers, you would have to use the disable the cores and enable just one core so you're able to enjoy the game. But now, that's one less thing you have to worry about. So if you're thinking about getting a Threadripper 3970X, make sure you listen to this. If you're thinking about getting a Threadripper 3970X strictly as a gaming rig, CPU is a little bit expensive to be using as a gaming CPU. And you're better off winning on NVIDIA's new GPU, which is the 3080 RTX or the 3080 RTX Ti when that eventually releases because most of your gaming load is going to be coming off of there anyway. Processing wise, you're much better off getting Intel's 10900K or getting AMD's 3900X. Maybe if you're rendering 3D or if you're a filmmaker or you're a content creator. But the question is, does AMD does its job of multi-core processing? So one, let's get to performance. So how is the performance of this monster? Nothing is better to test this processor on their father time. There was a reason why I gave up AMD years ago. I kind of felt that they were losing their touch ever since the Athlon series. And that was back 15 years ago. Intel had something of a newer technology, which is hyper threading. They kept killing it each year and every year. Until, man oh man, AMD introduced the seven nanometer architecture. I mean, there's just the way to go. They say, don't wait to sleep in dragon, right? Well, I knew things were changing when AMD completely and utterly revamped their processor series. And now, they unleashed the dragon. You can judge for yourself on how fast it renders in Premiere Pro in 4K. And I just went crazy hours into Adobe, into Lightroom, into Premiere Pro, into Photoshop, anything you can really think of, and it's just been outstanding. And how about Father Time? Well, I'll tell you one thing. It still performs just as well as the first day I got it. Well, is it just as reliable or will it give you that lovely blue screen of death? And that's number two. We'll get into reliability. Intel has been pretty trustworthy and they have always been the go-to and the most reliable processor I've ever gotten. It didn't have any problem whatsoever. It would always work no matter how extreme the workloads I would put under that processor. But of course, five years has passed. So the performance wasn't quite there. It wasn't doing what I quite needed it to do. It couldn't finish jobs fast enough. And of course you're starting to get that nice little lag on it. But one of the most important things that you need from a workstation that it still can perform its work. I can tell you this, it's been eight months that's passed since I got that 3970X. No blue screens of deaths, no hardware freezes. I never had to worry about losing work or the duress of the CPU causing my PC to crash. So I never had to repeat tasks. And I gotta tell you, this Threadripper has been phenomenal. It has been reliable. 
It's great that AMD is now back with reliability as well. But let's get to number three. Does it have a problem with its heat? It would be pretty silly to expect this CPU to not build any kind of heat, especially got all 32 cores working. So it's doing a hell of a job working all 32 cores. It's definitely hotter than Intel CPUs. And it does not come with a stock fan just like Intel CPUs. Threadrippers, when you get them, inside the owner's manual, they give you a nice little notification saying that this needs to be liquid cooled. If you're not familiar with my setup, you can check it out in the card just above me. If you're not familiar with my setup, I have an AIO on my CPU currently on the 3970X. And I gotta tell you, it's been keeping it cool most of the time. That's right, you heard me right, most. Because if you're in the Northeast Coast, especially in the summertime, you know it gets pretty brutally hot and humid up here. How does it fare well to idle temperatures in the hot? Of course, if you listen closely, I got the AC run. So typically the ambient temperature I have in this room is typically about 80 to 82 degrees. But that keeps this house pretty cool. How does the Threadripper fare to it? Usually my CPU keeps around that 42 degrees Celsius range. Now when it's under work load, it's been high as 86 degrees Celsius. But that's it. That's how high it's gotten to 86 degrees Celsius. No more higher, but it does drop down lower. And that's only, of course, at the high point. So I haven't really had any serious heat issues with it. And if you look at the temperatures of the 3970X, they typically do run pretty hot. So make sure you go on the website on AMD and check out the how hot it, how hot it should get. Also, another thing I've been thinking about doing is switching out my AIO with a different AIO, or maybe just uh, doing a whole liquid cooling setup for that CPU. If you guys would be interested in seeing that, let me know in the comments down below. So it does get pretty toasty, as you hear. But let's get to number four. How about the cost? Is it really worth having a CPU that gets hot but performs really well? So for the cost of this processor, of course it's pretty expensive, considering you got the cost of the motherboard, which is fairly high, especially for such a new product just like this. Back when I bought my motherboard, it was about $550 I spent on my motherboard to pair with the CPU. And also, you have to consider getting the RAM, and, and if you're not transferring over from an old workstation, you're gonna probably get new SSDs, more than likely, you're going to want new SSDs that have NVMe 4.0 on them. So you can run the maximum performance and make sure it can do its work fast and efficiently and perform super well without any problems. Now, if you do a build like that, of course, it's pretty expensive. It's a pretty expensive build. It's, uh, but that build is a lot cheaper still than Intel CPU. Right now, you can get it at the price for $1850. If you're interested in that, make sure to check it down in the description down below because it's on sale right now. Usually it's at the cost of $1,900. I've got to say, it's helped out my workflow greatly and I've finished projects way faster than I expected it to, to even be finished. So I believe it covered the cost and then some. But overall, is this something that I recommend? Number five, so overall, is it really worth getting the CPU? AMD was something I used to recommend 15 years ago, but I believe that they lost their touch. I had to go with Intel because they became the new champion of processors for years. But I'm proud to say I'm back again AMD. If AMD keeps producing products just like the 3970X, I'll be here to stay. Also, I've got to say, if you found this video very useful, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy content just like this, Make sure you hit the subscribe button down below and hit that notification bell. And for all the newest updates, make sure you follow my Twitter handle right here. But if you're thinking about getting a 3970X, make sure you listen to these very next details. The tech world is not easy to compete against, especially against Intel. But AMD has fought all odds and they showed 
that they still do exist. And they showed the world that seven nanometer architecture is not early. It's here and it's the future for the PC world. That is why now AMD is the reigning champion of CPUs. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is Chris Mizo, signing out.